chance encounters, people you meet, something like that. The phrase I want to talk about is a couple of stories that back this back up this. One yeah. is about our good friend Jose Noya. Yeah. So I first met Joe back in the year of two thousand and two. Not sure if you were even born then yet, Ryan, or I was know, I was seven. Away. So you were seven years old. I was in the world of work. I, I remember when I was younger and I talked to people who were working when I was at school and I'd be like, God, you're so old and I am now that person to you. So yeah, it'll be me to other people soon. <laughs> it happens to us all. So I was yeah, out, sure. out at work in 2002 and I first met Joe. Joe was a team leader at Asins Direct. I was on a on yep. a different team, but there was the, the, the department where I was. Don't normally let out there where I worked, but that's where it was. The department where I worked, there were like four or five team leaders. Joe was one of those. And there was like social group. We used to do online football manager back in the day when it was on dial up, Ryan. So, or maybe it was whatever the first iteration of broadband was. I can't remember what it was called. Is that where you had the dodgy tone as you picked up the phone? Yes, 100%. In fact, I remember because the rest of us had broadband that had just come out and you could use it without interrupting the phone line. You didn't need to dial up and it was super fast. Yeah. Um, Joe was still on dial up at the time and kind of lagged behind. And he still but, is. But we used to do a Sunday evening online gaming, and that was first first time I knew Joe. And then yeah. a few few years in, I became Joe. I became Joe's. Joe became my team leader. Worked with Joe. Was a good time. We did, we did some good stuff together. And then as happens, I think one of us left and the other one left. I can't remember what order it happened in. But you know, we moved on to doing different things. Yeah. And then over the years, there were a few different get-togethers where people would socialise, and I bumped into Joe at a couple of them. And I think a couple of times we were like, oh, we should maybe go out for a, a drink and have a chat, which we did. And I think Joe at some point was looking for a role where I was working, was looking for someone to do training stuff, which as we know, Joe loves that sort of area. So I brought Joe in, we worked together. There was an odd period where we kind of drifted apart together, even in the same company, and then we got a bit, a bit closer again. Joe then left. And this is, I'm talking, this is a 10, 15 year period of time where we'd cross paths now and again. And yep. then through, and then we decided to, you know, off the back of the last time, we'd, we'd keep in touch. So we met up a couple of times. I got into, you know, listening to podcasts and stuff. Joe was looking for outlets for coaching. We talked about this on some of the journey episodes I expect. And we were like, oh, let's start a podcast. And we set ourselves a goal that within three weeks or whatever the time was, we get sync up and running. And since then, over four years ago now, I've spoken to Joe pretty much every week since then. I mean, I know early on we did our three week recording cycle, but that yeah. within the first year, we were down to doing this virtually weekly and obviously it's been a huge fixture of my life ever since. And I mean, this... we, we had the group chat as well, to be fair. Yeah, that's true. So actually, we, we would have messaged quite a lot. In yeah, there. in fact, so we we talk very regularly. In fact, and you know, become a very important fixture within my within my life and the personal level. And through doing this together, has opened up all sorts of doors. So there's people that I've met, experience I've had, things I've done that would never have happened if it wasn't for me meeting Joe. And yeah. we don't know. You know, we're very early on in this. God knows what this is going to lead to. Whether it's the podcast, something else, someone I meet off of that, but. That all goes all the way back to someone I worked with in an office years and years ago was then like we had that proper relationship where he was my my team leader at the time and I worked with him. And then we just, you know, on and off stayed in contact. But if you'd have told me however many years ago, a lot of years ago, close to 20 years ago, what we'd be doing today from where we were then would be unthinkable. And other people who I stayed friends with from then and doors it's open opportunities and stuff so i so suppose being open to doing things putting myself up there maintaining good relationships with people has kind of led to all this stuff that you'd never expected and you go forward and you can trace the dots of people on things that have happened and it seems a logical progression but it's such chance encounters that have kind of led yeah. led to where we are now and then my, my story, which isn't to do with me, but to back this up, is there's a, and you know, there's there's articles about this stuff, this guy, but it's the person who's behind the podcast network that I listen to, who in the, the world we've, we've touched on my love for the great thing that is professional wrestling. He, in that world, he's a very, very well-known person now. And I don't know all the ins and outs of it, from my perspective, he's very successful and is integrated within within the industry and he's quite an influential person within the industry. Um, in fact, he put on a show this year, last year, 
um, in the States that outside of the big companies, and there's two big companies, is the largest show that anyone's ever ran independently. Sure. Um, and I was really fascinated as how he got into this world, and I say other people ask his articles on it, but effectively, he was a successful businessman in doing something. He enjoyed wrestling. He got involved with a Kickstarter, so we all know what that is in the days before GoFundMe, I'm sure, and chucked in some money. And one of the benefits, if you reach a certain level of putting into this as these things run, was that one of the people involved in it would come and you'd basically, he'd come and watch, I don't know if it's this thing or a different thing, but he'd come and spend a bit of time with you. So they yeah. group him and his friends put in some money, guy came round, they spent all you know evening questioning him, talking about what's going on, picking his brain, having a great time. And it kind of dawns on him that out there, wrestlers do personal appearances all the time at shows and conventions and whatever else. So actually, could he offer one of them their fee, but he comes and hangs out with him and his mates for an evening and they chat and they ask questions and they get to know him, which is quite a good idea, I think. Um, and started off down that, oh, my battery's going to die, so I need to plug it on. So started doing that with a few people and got to meet people and et cetera, et cetera, through it. Um, one of them was a very big wrestler who he became quite friendly with um yeah at some point this very big wrestler has an opportunity to do a podcast but he needed someone to do it with him and this this guy who runs the network conrad's his name by the way conrad thompson google him did radio spots for his company that he had this sort of thing where you the, it's i don't i've not seen much of it here in the uk but it must happen in the, the states where it's not just doing an advert. He'd kind of come in and do half an hour on the show and promote his company and whatever else. So he was quite comfortable in that sort of environment, doing radio spots and interviews and whatever else. So he said, oh, can you help me with my podcast? Which he did. He had moderate success. They didn't really go any more with it. He then got talking to someone else through one of these, you know, his relationships he started to build up. And they had a conversation. He's like, that should be a podcast. And they're like, all right, we'll give it a go. The guy on the other side of it, was someone who'd been huge in the wrestling industry, he had loads of stories to tell and was, wasn't doing anything at the time. And it's like, oh, we can do that, maybe sell some T-shirts, sell a few adverts, do whatever. They started a podcast and this thing exploded. They hit an episode like three or four in that got like, um, their view was if we can get 10,000 downloads, we're doing all right and we can make some money off of this. First few shows, yeah. hundreds of thousands of downloads. This particular show very early on was at a million really, really quickly. Paraphrasing that, I heard him talk about this in a recent show. I'm hoping I get the numbers right. But it just exploded and became this phenomenon in the rest of the world. They then, off the back of it, started doing live shows. They sold shed loads of T-shirts, started getting genuine adverts coming in. I think they got like even a... They signed up to a deal where they got money up front. It was, it was so successful. And then, similar way, he started a second podcast and a third podcast. And suddenly he was up to like six or seven podcasts. They dabbled with Patreon, something we, we've looked at ourselves, Ryan, obviously without that similar lim lim listener base behind it. That, hold on, I'm going to get my plug in before I die. High tech as we go, people, plugging in as we go. Um, and they started a Patreon, and this is like, a, it's, and what for a few of the shows, and then they came up with what they called a Super Patreon, which I'm a member of, I will be proud to say. Here is my ad-free shows hat that I proudly wear, being part of the ad-free shows family shall we say and they've got this month it's and it's ad free shows because you get all the shows early and you get them without adverts but there's loads of other bonus stuff behind it we do yeah and i've sent you screenshots i've been on umpteen zoom calls with people i could only even imagine of met, having met one day and it's this really it's it's grown into this massive 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 thing um and that's what's led to the opportunity of putting on the shows and whatever else and etc and this guy's well embedded in the rest of the world now from being a fan and the re how this ties in is this all goes back to putting into that Kickstarter. Maybe we can get a few people to talk to us. And it's just snowballed and snowballed and snowballed. And there's no way when this started, and there's multiple points in this journey, where it's just exploded each time, that it would have gone like it's gone. And I think a big part of how that's happened is his approach to, well, let's put myself out there. Let's give it a go. Let's say yes. Let's work as hard as I can with this opportunity and see what it grows into. And I feel like in a very different way, that's why I do some of the things I do now. And I, I guess the, 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 the moral of the story or the inspiration I'm trying to give is never underestimate the value people can bring to you or you can offer to people from 
God knows what chance meetings, conversations, whatever else that you can have. Um, and yep. actually look back where you are now over what some of them are and what can they be in the future or what, what could you do for other people. I know I've talked a lot there, so I'll pause and see what you think about all of that. And I'll stick on my ad-free shows hat while we do this. Uh-huh.